What I'd like to do today is talk about the issue of knowledge in the humanities. You see, what I've found over the years of teaching the humanities is that many people have come to believe that science is where we learn the facts. If we want to find out what is true, if we want to gain knowledge about reality, then we turn to the sciences. There's little hope that knowledge about objective reality can be discovered in the humanities. The humanities are seen as a realm in which all we have is opinion, but no one can really know for sure what is the right answer to these questions. Those who seek to defend the importance of the humanities oftentimes do so by viewing the humanities as a descriptive discipline. The humanities may not lead us to knowledge about the way things actually are, or about life's most basic questions, but rather the humanities can help us learn people's opinions about things. We end up in a situation in which we describe what others believe. Group A believes in many gods. Group B believes in one god. Group C believes in no god at all. All we're left with is people's opinions. Group A believes that loving your neighbor is a great way to live life. Group B believes that eating your neighbor is a great way to live life. All we're left with is people's opinions. Why would we say that these issues are just a matter of opinion? Well, because many are working under the assumption that unless we can see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, or hear it, we can't be sure if it's true or not. This is why people begin to look to science as a primary authority of knowledge. So first I'd like to point out some of the assumptions that science has to depend on in order to get off the ground. You see, there's certain assumptions that science has to take for granted in order for science to work, in order for science to be a tool that actually leads us to knowledge. Here are some of those assumptions. Number one, the uniformity of nature. This is the idea that the future will resemble the past. Number two, the orderly nature of the world. Number three, the knowability of the external world, that we can know the world as it really is. Number four, the general reliability of our senses. And number five, the laws of thought. These are all things that are necessary in order for science to help us discover things about the world. These presuppositions are not things that science can establish, but rather it has to presuppose them. They have to already be in place in order for science to get started. So what establishes these presuppositions? The humanities do. How is it that we come to know these things? Well, we start with the laws of thought. The laws of thought include the law of identity, which states that A is A, the law of non-contradiction, which states that A cannot be both A and not A at the same time in the same way, and the law of excluded middle, which states that something is either A or non-A. The laws of thought cannot be denied. To attempt to deny them is to assume them. In order to say that dog is also not dog is to assume the laws of thought because we can't even begin to speak about dog unless the law of identity is in place. We must also recognize that the laws of thought are also laws of what is. They are laws of being. The laws of thought are not merely how we think about things, but they are also laws about the world around us. Something cannot be both dog and not dog at the same time in the same sense. The universe cannot both exist and not exist at the same time in the same sense. Once we have this in place, then we can begin to build off of this foundation to show that the presuppositions of science can, in fact, be established. This raises another point. As human beings, we can then recognize that an essential part of our nature is that we are rational beings. We are rational animals. One key question that drives the humanities is the question, what does it mean to be human? Different people have offered different responses, but now instead of just saying, well, nobody can know for sure, instead of just saying, well, it's all just a matter of opinion, 
we can now begin to examine the claim to see if it's consistent with that which we already know. I'll close with this point. A major part of the humanities is in fact descriptive. It is important that we understand the beliefs, arguments, and practices of different groups. It is also helpful to gain understanding of how these beliefs, arguments, and practices have come to influence our own day, our own culture, our own ways of thinking. However, the humanities don't need to be, nor should they be, merely descriptive. The study of the humanities is an opportunity for us to seek and find answers to life's most important questions. Socrates stated that the unexamined life is not worth living. The humanities invites us to live an examined life, and it provides us with the opportunity to seek answers and to find answers to life's most important questions.